Good evening. This is the June 7th, 2018 meeting of the Northam City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council president. I'll be presiding tonight. Let me note the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And the very first thing we'll do, as always, is a call for public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. We ask you only to keep two minutes. Uh, and also remember that this is your time and we don't engage in a back and forth with the subjects that you might bring up. So uh, are there any members of the public who'd wish to speak at this time? My gosh, nobody. Okay. Uh, then we will proceed to a roll call of the council so we can convene. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Lafarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Here. Okay. So we are convened, and the first item of business is a continuation of a public hearing from yesterday concerning the uh, 2019 budget uh, in accordance with Article 7 of the Charter. And this was a hearing that was opened yesterday and continued by the Council. I'm not sure we need a motion to reopen it, but for Just good measure, I'll, I'll ask. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll um, <coughs> reopen it. Uh, the, the hearing. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 There's no abstentions. So the hearing is reopened. Um, yesterday we had a number of departments come and present, and it was agreed upon that uh, department heads are not going to present today. Uh, but I will ask first if there are members of the public who would like to speak uh, about this year's budget, proposed budget. Okay. Hearing none, are there any? Comments or questions from the council? No. Oh, Councilor Klein. I have a number, but okay. I can defer to someone else if someone wants to start. No? Well, Mr. Mayor, would you be willing to field some questions? Try yep. And, and the finance director? Okay. And so you, you're doing this during the public hearing, not right. the actual deliberation of the budget? Right. This is hearing. Okay. So six to one, half a dozen to the other. Okay. That's okay. So Whatever. Okay, great. Yeah. So, Mayor, would you prefer to kind of hear a little bit of a laundry list and take them one by or take them one by one? Um, maybe I'll try to take them one by one. It okay. Might be easier because I may not remember the list. So. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to hear a little bit about what comprises the two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars of legal expenses in the budget besides the city solicitor. Sure. Yeah. So um, the way the legal budget is constructed is um, we create a, uh, one line item for sort of the legal department. And, um, and so the city solicitor is obviously appointed to sort of lead that. He, um, we have a contract with him and he's paid a, a hourly rate based on, you know, billable hours and he keeps very meticulous bills and bills the city um, and you know when he's working for the planning board he signs it to that when he's working with the council you know on the legislative matters committee etc if he does work for the water department or you know whatever it is um, we also have a second contract with um, the law firm of Sullivan Hayes and Quinn which is our um, labor uh, attorneys so they handle all collective bargaining um, for the city um, uh, and so any sorts of personnel matters or other things like that. Um, so those are sort of like the two main uh, or primary folks that, that are part of that overall legal budget. Um, and then we have some specialized um, outside counsel that we retain from, you know, sort of um, from time to time based on um, either litigation that arises or special, you know, subject matter, um, you know, for example, uh, the the um, litigation you may have read about concerning the um, the, the police station. Um, we've retained outside counsel that specializes in public building construction litigation. Um, we also, um, you know, if there are cases where there's environmental concern, when we were doing a lot of the work with Columbia Gas around the environmental remediation outside here in the Roundhouse. We have people that are specialized for environmental. Um, so when you take a look at that actual budget, I just want to pull this up. As, as it turns out, I was uh, 
just provided this information to an, for another counselor today. Um, you don't you don't have that in paper form, do you? Because I'm trying. To I, can, I can look it up on my phone. It'll be easier. My my wife. It's too simple. Oh, uh, you've got it. You printed it. So I he, printed it out. He actually asked the question <laughs> earlier to me simultaneously, so I'd actually provided it to him. Um, so, uh, so for the for that legal budget, for example, um, in FY 2017, uh, the um, the breakdown uh, was roughly, um, you know, uh, Attorney Seawald uh, was one hundred and one thousand um, dollars. Sullivan Hayes and Quinn was twenty five thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars and thirty two cents. Um, uh, the law firm of Draper and Moore, um, and they're involved in both the environmental litigation as well as the police station uh, issue, $9,558. Um, then there's the firm of Jankowski and Spencer. Uh, Attorney Spencer is a uh, real estate specialist, um, and he does all of our real estate work. So any of the acquisitions, including the acquisition tonight, um, relative to the water supply uh, district and any of the other conservation land that Mr. Fiden does, he, they're sort of our real estate experts. So they handle the closings and all of the title searches and all that. Um, and then we have other, um, so I mean, that sort of gives you a, a picture of how that works. The way we budget is we try to look at, it's, it's one of those accounts that goes up and down because it's driven by litigation, basically. We don't know every year. So we've tended to use multi-year averages. When I first became mayor, um, we tended to, well, the history had been we way under budgeted for legal, and it was one of those accounts that we kept having to come throughout the year and do transfers, kind of like snow and ice and veterans. And so we actually tried to start using multi-year budgeting. So we budgeted um, using like five-year averages. And so, uh, so, so the 275 reflects what we think based on five-year averages. The other thing to keep in mind is um, we're about to go into a year of collective bargaining. Um, this year uh, is the final year of all of our city contracts. So we're going to be spending, so that Sullivan, Hayes, and Quinn piece will go up uh, considerably. We also don't know what the litigation on the police station is going to entail. So that's kind of the breakdown, um, but that 275 is is an overall law department budget, which um, the solicitor oversees. He oversees any outside counsel that's brought in and oversees their billing. Um, and he also oversees, uh, to a lesser extent, Sullivan, Hayes, and Quinn, um, who primarily works with our HR department. So, um, so that's kind of how it is. And you have some, yeah, we actually have a chart. Why wow, we even have a chart? Um, this is sort of, you can't really see it, but this is sort of how the legal spending has gone. This is the actuals over the, so you can kind of see that it's very cyclical. Um, but I think the, do we have the, do we do what the five-year average was? I think uh, we're right I, at it. I, yeah, yeah. I, I could calculate Yeah, that. but I mean, that's basically the 275 is right in what our <coughs> five-year average is. So that's how we came, came up with that. And again, we were trying to get away from way under budgeting and then spending most of our, and then having to keep coming back to transfer money in. So, so that's the legal budget. Thank you. Yep. That's helpful. Does someone else want to go before I? I'm going to switch off. Any other questions from the council? No. I'll just, I'll just mention that I, I had, had some questions coming out of yesterday and, and submitted them to the mayor last night and uh, all were, Answer to my satisfaction, including the same question about just what is the two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So, thank you for your responsiveness. Thank you. Um, other questions? Let's go back to the council from Ward Seven. Um, I wanted to ask about the IT department budget because this past year we um, heard from Mr. Pagan about uh, the merger that we did that was supposed to make things more efficient, but also I understood save us money. And I see that the budget for IT actually. Um, increased by a certain percentage despite this merger. So I wanted to know if the merger, in fact, has um, saved us money, and if it has, why um, we're actually budgeting more of this in the coming fiscal year. Yeah. So I mean, the the 
the merger at the time was to, it was partially was was mostly to create more efficiency in terms of having uh, shared staff. Um, the fact that we have shared networks and we have you know all of our city and schools are on the same network fiber network, um, and uh, and it was an attempt to, to try to you know unify people that are working on hardware, people that are working on servers, et cetera. Um, and in that first year that we did it, it was, you know, and the costs are still a portion between NPS and they're still paying for a portion of it. We actually absorbed a little bit more of it at the time um, uh, in terms of where we took on a little bit more of the merger. Um, but I thought it was important because I think ultimately it was in the best interest of the city and it's something that our IT study a few years ago had recommended. So in terms of the increases this year, we added a position. yes, yeah. So this year, um, one of the things we did in the budget that's showing that increase is we are adding an additional position in the IT department. Um, one of the things that had happened over time uh, is, uh, well, and this was kind of called out in our IT study, is that um, our IT services before, it used to be called the Municipal Information Services Department, um, had really become decentralized and um, different departments were doing different things in terms of, um, in terms of, in some cases, doing their own IT, hiring outside consultants. Um, in the police department, for example, um, they have and actually still have a sworn police officer who's pretty much doing a lot of IT work. Um, and so one of the things we've tried to do, which the study recommended, is move away from that um, and try to have our IT department actually manage the IT for both the police, the fire, and the dispatch. And so, um, as, so that we can let the police and fire do the jobs they were you know, trained and are well paid to do. So um, last year we, hire, we hired an additional um, half-time staff person, actually who's splitting half-time between uh, doing normal IT and then also doing um, learning the public safety uh, uh, tech, because it's much, it's sort of its own subset. It's not like the rest of the city tech. There's the IMC system for police, and then the fire has its own uh, system, and then D dispatch has its own system. So. What we realized is that we re to really have the proper staffing for those three public safety agencies, we really need like one and a half people to manage those three systems. So the goal here is to bring that person on um, so that they can then learn the rest of it so that we can transition fully to having that done by civilian IT staff. So that's really the goal. And, and you know, similar to what you heard Chief Casper say last night, um, whereas in the police budget, we're adding a civilian position. It's the idea is to take is to have police doing police work and have the civilian work being done by civilians. So that's one of the reasons you'll pr you're pricing an increase this year. That's different from when the merger occurred. Um, and then we've I think we've probably also put some additional money into their OM account. Yeah. Um, about thirty thousand. Again. Um, because we're trying to dedicate the resources that we need to keep the IT system running. And, and what we found is that we were not, uh, as we've been building out the system and building out um, upgrading servers and replacing servers and upgrading hardware and switches, um, that we it wasn't really, ref we've also been moving all of the um, software licensing, which again had been kind of dispersed all throughout the city is now under IT, we're not letting individual departments buy their own computers. Where all of it has to go through IT, so that we're buying the same equipment and we're not, you know, creating all these various licenses and things. So, um, so in some cases, we're moving stuff from other departments. You know, licensing, you know, for GIS that used to be in two different places, moving it into IT. Um, and we're, in some places, removing tech from some departments and centralizing it. Sort of what we did with central services many years ago when we started moving like copier contracts and all kinds of other contracts into central services. So, so that's, show, that's probably the reason for the IT. I can tell you that um, the school department is uh, benefiting greatly from the new model. Um, 
the IT department. Um, Mr. Bagan and Dr. Provost have hired um, a, a, a tech coordinator for the schools as part of their team who's really uh, is now focusing on uh, use of technology in classrooms and training of teachers and can really focus on that. And, and the, I, the larger IT department can focus on making sure all the networks and all that stuff is running properly. So in terms, of the, in terms of delivery of services, I think we're delivering much better services to both city and schools. Um, you know, we've got a help desk system now that's functional, which was one of the other recommendations. Um, they just completed the implementation of the new phone system. That was a, about a year-long project. Um, so I, that's, the, that's sort of the overall piece of where we are. But this is, a, this is one new additional staff that we're adding this year. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Oh, you <laughs> The floor is yours. <laughs> Sorry to drag this out. So I have a question that comes directly from a constituent okay. who is a retired um, school teacher in Northampton. Okay. Um, just asking about how, uh, when we switched over to GIC, their um, the budgeting didn't allow for particular kinds of health insurance for retired teachers and so they feel like they've been shortchanged many of them she certainly does and um, I thought because it's such a kind of public issue I would yes. ask this publicly yeah, and I can explain that and and you know our HR department actually did a number of public meeting or public uh, seminars for retirees um, to discuss the changes and we actually put together an FAQ that we sent out as well um, what happened this year, so we're a member of the Group Insurance Commission, which is, you know, the state's, uh, it's called the GIC. Um, and so the GIC actually, uh, this was a year um, that they went out to bid on all of their new plans. Basically, every so many years they go out to bid. Um, and all of the plan providers have to, you know, renew basically and submit bids. Um, you probably heard there was a sort of a brouhaha early in the year um, where, they had, you know, we're going to consolidate a bunch of plans and eliminate a bunch of plans, and then the GIC ended up going back and rescinding that. And, and so, um, but the long and short of it is when they went ahead and adopted the new um, uh, contracts with all of the different providers on the uh, uh, non Medicare retirees, so there's, there's retirees who are not 65 who are continue on a normal sort of health plan after they retire. And then, there's, then there are folks who become el Medicare eligible who then typically go on Medicare and then they get like a Medigap plan or something like that. Um, uh, in the past, there had been multiple HMO options in that um, retiree, non-Medicare retiree category. Um, through the whole procurement process, they ended up consolidating them um, to one uh, plan choice, um, and then uh, the, and so Health New England had been the longtime HMO in that plan, um, and some, I'm sure most of our city employees are in Health New England. They ended up, the GIC ended up um, selecting Tufts to be the, um, uh, to be their new HMO provider. Um, they did offer a blend of other PPO type plans, and they did offer a, a Health New England PPO plan. Um, and so what happened was, um, and, and again, so people who were on Health New England retirees had, if they wanted to stay on a Health New England plan, they needed to, they needed to transition to the PPO plan, um, which meant a higher copay, or in terms of the city share versus our the employee share. But if they wanted to keep the HMO arrangement, they needed to stay on the Tufts plan. Um, and so, you know, obviously, um, it, it caused some concern, some disruption for people, particularly people who are retired, um, people that are living all around in different parts of the the country at this point. Um, so we tried to do a lot of outreach to help them fill out the forms and figure out where they wanted to go. Um, but it did create, a, a, it was an odd situation the way it played out here in Western Mass. I actually had a, um, arranged a call and had a pretty extensive call with um, 
the new executive director of the uh, GIC, Dr. Robo Roberta Herman, to kind of explain the fact that this kind of had a unique impact on us because of Health New England and the fact that so many of our employees were on Health New England. Um, and it didn't happen on the active employee side. You know, the Health New England HMO plan remained the same. It's just, it just happened in that, um, in that other group. Um, and so, uh, you know, I expressed the concerns we have about that. And, um, and, but the problem for us was the timing was such that they announced the plans like at the end of March, I think it was, um, <coughs> and then open enrollment started. Um, and we did, there was no, there was really no way at that point that there could be any change made. And the other problem, oddly enough, um, is that, uh, it's not a problem, but um, the re uh, retirees in Massachusetts about when they first passed the health insurance um, reform act, which allowed cities and towns to negotiate into the GIC, um, lobbied and successfully to get a law passed that basically said that municipalities could not touch the contribution levels for retirees. Um, they're sort of frozen in place. And that bill has been renewed and renewed and renewed since then. So um, not, on, not only did we didn't have any control over the plans, but we didn't have any way to change the, uh, the um, contribution rates, which, are, which we'd have to negotiate anyway. So, the long and short of it is that did create a, a situation for some of our uh, non-Medicare retirees. Um, we try, we, our HR department held a number of seminars at the senior center to try to explain why this was happening and to help them, you know, our, our biggest concern was that they migrated into the proper plan. Um, and so I think we got them through that. Um, the GIC, uh, we are now um, going to be opening up our, the period is now opening up where we have to go through the process to determine whether we're going to stay in the GIC. Um, and so that's an, that's it involves a process where I have to meet with our employees, the public employees committee, and we're beginning the early data collection on that to see. But that's going to be one of the issues we'll talk about whether we will stay in the GIC or not. And I did express that to the, um, to the GIC that that could be a major factor about whether we would stay in or not. But um, yeah, so that was kind of a, um, a kerfuffle that, that was created by the GIC that we had to kind of adapt to and, and work through. Um, it's something also that we're going to have to take a look at our contribution, um, you know, and that may be something we have to talk about in, in bargaining. What We have a model where um, for HMO plans, we reimburse 80% and the employee pays for 20%. For the PPO and, and indemnity plans, we do, it's a 50-50 share. Um, interestingly, like the university, uh, for example, um, they, well, they've changed their reimbursement levels, but pretty much they reimburse the same amount no matter what type of a plan you're in. Um, so it didn't have any, like, we were curious, like, why is this, why is this only affecting Northampton and some other smaller cities, but like UMass, for example, has the <coughs> same contribution. So it didn't matter um, that HM, that Health New England became a PPO because you could get in the PPO and it wouldn't affect your contribution level. So one of the things we may talk about is do we, do we look at changing our contribution requirements um, or not? Our, we have to negotiate them. It's a, it's a negotiation. It's a collective bargaining issue uh, that we'll have to negotiate. But that may be one of the things we look at. Um, what's happened with UMass is I think they used to pay 90% um, uh, of the employee's health insurance. And then they have slowly ratcheted that back. If you, if you became employed at UMass, you know, um, you know, after a certain cutoff date, I think now they pay 80% and, and such. So, um, so that's a really long answer to what happened with that. But we have heard from many teachers and we've heard from many retirees and we did try to put together sort of an FAQ to explain it. And it's just going to be one of the things we need to talk about when we consider the GIC. That said, if you read the budget message, um, the GIC has been really, um, you know, on the whole, I think a positive for our employees, and it certainly has been a positive for the fiscal situation for the city because, um, you know, going back to when I first became mayor, you know, Northampton with, you know, a certain number of employees and retirees having to negotiate with health insurance companies, um, we 
didn't have a lot of leverage and um, we were facing steep rate increases every year. Plus, you also have the plan experience of just your employees, whereas now we are sort of, we have the bargaining power of every state employee. Um, and so that has allowed the GIC this year, as I pointed out, they, you know, none of their plans, PPOs or, or Health New England had increases, uh, which is sort of unheard of. Um, so that kind of helped us in that regard. Um, so, but again, it's going to be a decision to look at, and we'll have to look at what are the private plans offering versus what it will, uh, whether staying in the GIC is the right way to go. I, and also our employees like the choice that they have because they get to, you know, because before we select one plan and that's it. You have one, you know, there's one plan for the city. Um, and uh, <laughs> whereas the GIC gives you choices of different plans. So, so that's the, the answer on that one. Thank you. Rather long, sorry. Other, other questions? <laughs> Any other questions from the council? Um, okay, it should be noted that we did have budget hearings yesterday as well. And if you're watching at home, you should know that we had, uh, as I stated, department heads come in and uh, had substantial conversation on the budget at that time as well. Um, tonight was mainly to hold over to make sure that members of the public who couldn't get the JFK yesterday uh, earlier in the evening could come tonight. So I'll issue one last call for any public comment on the budget, budget hearing. Okay. Hearing on, do I hear a motion to close the hearing on this? Make a motion to close. Second. Second. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So that hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Um, one announcement um, regarding executive session minutes. Uh, the open meeting law requires public bodies to regularly review minutes of executive sessions to determine if they may be disclosed. Uh, it's been determined that because of pending litigation, the purpose of the November 16, 2017 executive session has not yet been served. Uh, so continuation, basically continue, continue non-disclosure of those minutes is still warranted. I've just made the official announcement. Um, any one minute announcement from members of the council? Oh, Councilor Bidwell. Yes, thank you. Um, the, the group Northampton Connects that had a first uh, community conversation about issues involving downtown Northampton back on April 3rd, there's a second conversation. This one's scheduled for Wednesday, June 20th at 6.30 p.m. at Edwards Church downtown here. And it too will be a, uh, an open and facilitated conversation about uh, issues pertaining to downtown Northampton and all are welcome. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Councilor Dwight. I, th I think it's worth noting that it uh, yesterday marked the birthday of Jen Ramsey, who's on the other side <laughs> of our cameras over here. <laughs> and she asked me not to announce that, so I thought I would. Exactly. So happy birthday, Jen. Happy birthday, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one break out into song. <laughs> well, she, she expressly asked that. She hates that song, so don't do that, whatever you do. But if you're watching at home, feel free to sing in your living room. <laughs> in honor of Jen Ramsey, whose birthday was yesterday. Um, okay, no other announcements. Uh, no resolution. Oh, well, uh, Your Honor, do you have any proclamations to communicate? You do not. Okay. Um, budget resolution will suffice. Okay. <laughs> All $112 million of it, yes, okay. Um, no resolutions, no presentations. I will read the items on the consent agenda and counselors can ask me if they wish to remove any. Uh, the consent agenda contains the following things. First, the minutes of April 19th, 2018. Um, the appointments uh, to various boards and committees. Uh, a vote on these will be equivalent to actually appointing these people. They've received positive recommendations from the Committee on City Services to the Board of Help, uh, excuse me if I, mess up any of these, uh, these names, to the Board of Health, Dr. Cynthia Swapsis uh, 120 Coles Meadow Coles Meadows Road, uh, Laurent Levy of Forest School Street, uh, to the Conservation Commission, Jack Finn of 57 King Street, to the Historical Commission, Barbara Blumenthal of 39 Chapel Street, to the Housing Partnership, James Reese of 108 Coles Meadow Road, to the Human Rights Commission, Joel Morse of 51 Vernon Street, to the License Commission, Brian Campidelli of 223 
cardinal way. Um, and here are more appointments which also receive positive recommendations and votes on these would be equivalent to appointing them. Uh, to the Agricultural Commission, Robert Bollinger, 460 North Farms Road. To the Board of Health, William Hargraves of 26 Crescent Street. Uh, to the Council on Aging, Cynthia Langley, uh, 419 Fairway Village. Gene Bruce of 36 South Park Terrace. Gene Petty, 63 North Loudville Road. Kathleen uh, Breeden of 7 Hampton Terrace. To the Housing Partnership, Michael Roy of 243 Park Hill Road. To the Parks and Recreation Commission, Glenn Connolly of 49 Platinum Circle. To the Public Shade Tree Commission, Jennifer Werner of 16 Winthrop Street. And Molly Hale of 96 Oak Street in Florence. To the Planning Board, Mark Sullivan of 83 Maynard Road. Alan Burson of 508 Kennedy Road in Leeds. And to the Trust Fund Committee, Catherine Foote Newman of 697 Bridge. Yes. I'd like to abstain on Catherine Foote, please. Okay, so what we will do is remove Catherine Foote and vote on her separately. Thank you, Counselor. Um, there is also the question of granting a secondhand dealer license uh, for uh, Birdhouse Music of 164 Main Street and Vintage Treasures of 121 North Main Street in Florence. There's the question of the application. Uh, the question of granting the business owner's permit for Jeffrey D. Miller uh, for Cosmic Cab Company. Um, I will ask we remove that item. Uh, the question of uh, granting a taxi cab license, five in fact, for Jeffrey Miller for Cosmic Cab, I will request we remove that item. Um, it also contains appoint more appointments to boards and votes on these would be equivalent to referring these to the Committee on City Services for consideration. Those are to the Arts Council, Esther White of 17 Summer Street, to the Council on Aging, Michael Ford of 6 Massasoit Street, to Parks and Recreation Commission, Carol Bertrand of 65 Hastings Heights, uh, to the Planning Board, uh, George Kohout of 234 State Street, and Krista Grenet of 492 Elm Street. Are there any other removals in the consent agenda? I'm, I move that we accept the consent agenda with the, uh, minus the removals. Is there a second? Second. second. <coughs> Debate. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, abstentions. So, consent <coughs> agenda is approved. I would accept a motion to um, uh, approve uh, the appointment of Catherine Foot Newman to the Trust Fund Committee. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any debate on this appointment? Um, if not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And one abstention from Council of the Barge. Thank you very much. Um, now, let me just, before we take up the, the cab issue, let me just clarify it. Um, so uh, on April 19th, the council took up this issue. Um, specifically, it took up the question of granting five vehicle permits for Jeffrey Miller uh, for Cosmic Cab. Um, the issue that was a sticking point at the time is that the place of operation of Cosmic Cab which we judge to be 23 Hooker Avenue, uh, is not zoned for commercial use. Um, and as a result, um, it, it was incumbent upon the owner of Cosmic Cab to go before the zoning appeals to see if something could be worked out so he could continue to use that location for that purpose. Um, so far, uh, that has not occurred. Um, the Extension being granted on April 19th. Um, Mr. Miller apparently applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, on June 4th, which is Monday. In other words, 46 days after the 60-day extension was granted. Uh, Mr. Miller requested an extension in a letter to the council dated yesterday, uh, which is June 6th. Um, I also have learned from Carol Mish, staff to the Zoning Board of Appeals, that upon receiving uh, the, the question of the extension. And again, I'm talking about the thing that we actually can extended on, on a temporary basis for 60 days, which is the actual taxi cab license. So before us, 18.120. Um, uh, they expect a hearing might be held on the 28th of this month. Um, so it's before the council decide what to do. My recommendation as far as the taxicab licenses themselves would be to um, 
grant another 60 days. It seems like, although I am disappointed, frankly, that um, the business owner did not come before the Zoning Board of Appeals until uh, pretty late in the game and waited a month and a half before doing it, as at least best, best information I have. Um, I'm still willing to allow the process to play out since there is a likely hearing scheduled. So um, unless anyone has anything else to discuss, I would ask, well, Councilman, well, do you want to? a question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Order. Yeah. Um, is, with these extensions, are these actually legally sustainable licenses with our, with our extension? I mean, mm -hmm. so that he's still allowed to operate his cabs or allowed well, to function without? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so let's let's get into the gray area now. Um, there, are, there are two things before us, and one of them is the same thing as was before us on uh, April 19th, and the other one is a new uh, question, which is the question of granting a business owner's permit for a cosmic cab. Um, that is an entirely new animal. Um, the information on that that I have is, oh, Mr. Miller is here too, and Mr. Miller, if you want to speak at any point, you'll certainly be recognized to do so. Um, the, the information I have in the business, uh, business owner's permit is um, the owner of the company never had a, a business owner's permit. Um, he might have had something that he thought was the functional equivalent um, given to him by a previous city clerk in the past, but there was not an actual business permit granted. Um, on April 19th, also, the council revised its taxi ordinance and as part of that revision, uh, our, our, or, our ordinance states pretty clearly that we cannot grant a business permit um, to a company whose primary uh, place of operation is not in conformance with state or city law. So that is a whole other question. Um, there are two. There's the business permit and there's the permit for the license. So, so relative to the business permit, mm -hmm. um, we we don't we don't have any leeway under our rules as far as that goes, and it might render the other issue moot, at least from my perspective. If you don't have a functioning business permit, then you don't have a functioning business, thereby cannot be licensed even temporarily. Or is that I well, mean, is and with the situation that we're looking at here? Well, I mean, as as you know, Councilor, I mean, the City Council makes laws, and in this case, grants licenses. We don't enforce the law, right. and. If and currently, the status quo is this company has no business uh, business license. Um, it's a question of our responsibility. What's our responsibility, and and, mm -hmm. and how do we do this as clearly and fairly mm -hmm. as possible? And I and clearly this well, okay. I'll wait to put it on the floor for that. Sure, sure. Conversation, and I would move this on the floor. Uh, both items, one nineteen and one twenty. And your actual motion is for approval of both? Um, for purposes of discussion, yes, for approval. Okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, Councilor Murphy. In, in his application, he states his business address is 160 Main Street, number 8, Northampton, mm -hmm. not Hooker Avenue. Mm -hmm. Now, 160 Main Street, um, from the sounds of it, is a legitimate business address. not a place where cabs could be stored and maintenanced and dispatched from, of course. No, but that's the address on the application, not Hooker Avenue. And that address, I believe, is legitimate lease zone for business. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Shara, then Councilor Doyle. Um, <coughs> to Councilor Murphy's point, that's true, but he's also going before the Zoning Board of Appeals to ask for, um, to allow his business on Hooker Avenue um, and have, have a, a change of that status at that location. And that's where the vehicles live. I don't know the answer. <laughs> Councilor Dwight. Um, it part, I mean, now actually, as you noted, that part of the circumstance is actually due to uh, that the city bears some responsibility on this on some level for the confusion. I think the business owner is um, everyone sort of allowed this confusion or gray area to to take place to allow the business to function but at the same time certainly um, not high function at least by the conditions that we've established currently um, to Councilor Murphy's point that that's true I remember that was part of the discussion 
um, the business address does it actually have to be directly correlated with where the business is and I, I argue there are a number of offshore enterprises that uh, claim that they're a business in the United States who don't, who, who, who don't have any offices here to speak of but we're talking about a, a cab company that provides a, a, a vital service in the community that we've currently allowed. We have made significant allowances. It's not, it shouldn't pass without notice uh, for this particular business. Um, I share your disappointment with the fact that um, the application of the ZBA was, wasn't more prompt. It would show, it would at least show uh, that the, the, some seriousness was directed towards the the charge that we, we we put in place. I'm just concerned about the issue of law um, relative to our responsibility. I don't want to continue to make a problem worse by us making up stuff as we go. And um, in the absence of, if, if we are to accept the business address that Council Murphy cites as the business address, then uh, and, and that's not excluded from the conditions in terms of the rules that we just passed, then, then maybe we should, in fact, grant the business permit for purposes of clarity and further discussion. Because absent that, then, as I said, the rest of it doesn't matter. If we don't, if there is not a functioning business, we can't approve a non-functioning business license to operate cabs. Well, city. first, I know Council Murphy wishes to speak. Let me provide information. Uh, the law, the, you know, our ordinance governing this says the following. Uh, business owner permits, well, permits, may be granted only to suitable persons, corporations, or other entities who are legally registered owners of said taxi cabs or livery vehicles, and provided that all places of business, all places of business, uh, for servicing Northampton are established at a legal street address within the city conforming to all applicable city ordinances and state laws. So the question of which is the, pri the, the principle is, is academic. Um, there is a place of business that has been acknowledged by virtue of going to the ZBA to seek uh, a, a waiver. Um, and so um, the law is very clear. Uh, so if, before we continue, and, and if, if Councilor Murphy would allow me, mm -hmm. I don't want to drag this out in public session very long. I, I want to suggest a solution for tonight. Um, and then if the counselors wish to talk about it more, they of course can. But what I think we should do is grant another 60 days for the vehicle permits, um, as we did last time. That takes care of that. The business thing, I don't, the business permit, I don't believe we are empowered by our law to grant. So, it's, but I also don't think we're required to turn it down. So I say, maintain the status quo, and at such a time as uh, appropriate, you know, business owner can come back. But you know, we don't have to turn it down. Uh, the city council grants licenses and makes law. We don't enforce the law. It's just a hazard. If I were the, if I were the cab company, I wouldn't want that to be the case because I'd be afraid the the Northam Police Department would pull me over, and then I would be worried about that kind of hassle in my business. And I'm just I'm stating the facts, and you can certainly speak. Um, but this is what I would propose as as a solution, basically maintaining tomorrow the exact same situation that we have today. Um, so that would be my my suggestion, rather than turn <coughs> down the business, which would be other other option. So Council so we would continue um, the the business owner's permit. Uh, to our meeting in July, let's say, because the 60 or right. So we're, then July would we'll be time for the ZBA to act. Continue until then, and then grant the other one when it comes up and it gets moved on a 60 day, and kick the can down the road, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Do that or deny the business application. Well, so I would move, ask for a motion to recognize Mr. Miller, who appears he wishes to speak. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention. Mr. Miller, would you like to provide any information? Uh, yes. Please. Uh, well, it's more of a question. <coughs> sure. And, uh, you know, a concern. Well, I've moved ahead with this business for six plus years. Uh, with all approval and working with the city of Northampton, you know, for, uh, for purposes of, of private transportation. And I've worked every step of the way. Now, it's kind of disconcerting to me to hear that a 
there's a jeopardy of some sort within the licensing structure or business permit for that matter, which was recently added to the ordinances, correct? Is what you're There was always a business permit that was required. Well, I have as a DBA, you're saying? No. Because I have I a understand business that. license for town. So you're, this is a separate ent um, thing that was added recently, the business operator's permit, which I, was enforceable. Is there the two things that are equivalent of different names. Do you have a business license? Yeah, for a DBA, for Cosmic Cap. So you have a doing business uh, as, as yes. designation, but not a business license. Is that correct? Well, it's the same. I mean. It's not the same. Well, the new business operator's permit, mm -hmm. I believe is what it's called in the ordinance, mm -hmm. is what you're referring to. That you're, is, that is what, question. Mm -hmm. yep, and that um, our ordinance was revised on April 19th. Yes. It is 45 days later. Yes. And you applied for that license recently. Again, I'm not trying to rake you over the coals. I'm actually I'm trying to. Ask you to know, yeah. you know, go moving ahead, what yeah. is exactly. You know, because I'm sorry I walked in into the middle of this. You're and, okay. Don't worry. You know, because of the nature of my business. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that affects, you know. That's okay. I think you find a group of people, uh, I'm, I'm guessing from past discussions, who want your business to remain open and things to be okay with you, but we're also wanting to make sure that um, the appropriate things happen. And, so you know, in fact, a 60 day extension was given 45 days ago. And when did you apply to the Zoning Board of Appeals? Uh, that would be, it was two days ago. Two days ago. And I, okay. did t I do take it very seriously. I'm not trying to, you know, mm -hmm. not respect uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. days that it was granted, but uh, due to my business in this time of year, I just, it's either I lose the business because I'm not focusing on it or I lose the business because I'm, you know, there's other, there's other things that uh, are just as important. So I, I you know, at that I apologize, and uh, but you don't have to apologize. Forward. Parking. So you're saying that parking in the city lots would not be permissible, as was. I mean, or, or I'm just trying to understand what exactly was in question. I'd like to make. You can park vehicles in the city in accordance with the laws governing wherever you you may choose to park. This is a question of granting a business license. Uh, we're not empowered to grant a business li license to any company that. Um, has any location that's out of conformance with the state or local law. Okay. So that's the reality. It's just the Hooker Ave address then. That's, that's the, and that's what you went to the Zoning Board of Appeals okay. about, yes, correct? Sir. 23 yes. Hooker Avenue? Okay. So you went to them a couple days ago and you expect to have a hearing on June <coughs> 28th. That's what I understand. 28th is okay. what I heard. Okay. So what I would like to do is, is, is continue your extension for the vehicles. But we do not legally have the power to give you a business license because you're out of conformance with, with local law. All right, I thought there was other issues going on. I'm sorry, like I said, I walked in the middle. No the problem. Discussion. Again, I think, I think we all want to make sure your business stays open, you provide a service to people who need it in the community. That being said, um, you know, I don't want this to happen again. And I'm sure you can work with us to make sure it doesn't happen again. Of course. I mean, like I said, if it's 60 days from now, I just won't put it on the agenda. Okay. okay. So well, please, well, it's in, it's ex in expedite agenda. the process, yeah, expedite the process, clean up the 23 Hooker Avenue issue, and it should be possible to do. Okay? And so I expect if, if the council goes along with what I want to do, then the status quo will be maintained, basically. So <laughs> for better or worse. But that's yet to be I seen. So is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Uh, uh, Councilor Murphy. I would move we continue the business operator's permit to our meeting in July. We have one meeting in July. Continue I'll with second that. that. Business owner's permit. Business, business owner's permit. permit. Okay. Any discussion on that? I will clarify for the record that that is not the equivalent of granting a temporary business license for 60 days. We are just not taking action on the question mm -hmm. of the license. Okay, for the record, that's noted. Any other discussion on that question of continuing the, bu the business owner's permit? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, do I hear a motion on the, on the application for the five taxi cab licenses to grant the licenses for an additional 60 days f um, from today? Let's see, if, um, if the Zoning Board of Appeals is the end of June, um, Let's just say 
until the first council meeting in August. The only council meeting. Exactly. Yeah. Just because I like right. we're here today three days before. Right. Well, the next council meeting will be three days before 60. So is that the, fair? The enough? August meeting will be beyond 60 days. From today? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It could only be the July meeting. We have the July meeting, right. which is what? 12th. 12th. Right. Mm -hmm. And then August 16th. So that would be basically a, a 60 day yeah. extension. Council Member. We, 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 we grant uh, a temporary license to extend through also through our July meeting because then we'll have the answer to Hooker Avenue theoretically yeah. at the same time. Right, and, and should circumstances dictate, then maybe even kick it. The only, the only thing that may mess that up is if somebody appeals the right. ZBA decision, but I think we could deal, you know, we can deal with that right. in July. So I would move. That's fine. Okay. July. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on granting those five temporary licenses? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, Good. Now we will recess for finance. That was a eventful consent agenda. <laughs> More than we expected. achieved consent, though. So, Laura, would you call the roll of finance, please? Sure. Councilor Murphy. I'm here. Councilor Chair. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Lavard. Here. No, take her here. 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 We see her. That's good. Um, just say here. So the first item. Um, <laughs> I just said it. Oh. This is for our minutes of April 18th, or 19th, 2018. The 18th on the second? Yes, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And now we need to deal with the budget in its, in its relevant pieces. The first is 18108, an order to approve the FY19 general fund budget. And I'm going to read through it quickly and just give you the categories and the totals for the categories. Uh, under the general fund, there is general government, which includes the city council, the mayor, the auditor, the assessor, the treasurer, collector, uh, the treasurer and the treasurer collector, legal services, human resources, information technology, city clerk and the registrar of voters, planning and sustainability, and central services. The total for that group is $5,538,290. Uh, then there's the public safety section, which is police, parking division, and parking enforcement, public safety, communication center, fire rescue, the building inspector, and the parking division and maintenance. That total is $14,227,257. Uh, for education, there is Smith Vocational High School and the Northampton School Department. The total there is $37,841,273. Uh, public works is administration and engineering street and general highway, st street, snow and ice control, uh, and the parks and cemeteries division. The total for them is $3,055,945. Human services would be the health department, senior services, and veteran services for $1,439,753. Culture and recreational services are the two, for the two libraries, Forbes and Lilly, the rec department, and arts and culture. Uh, the total for those is $1,946,535. Uh, municipal debt service, that would be municipal indebtedness and interest on the mu mu municipal indebtedness is $5,998,135. Employee benefits, uh, the retirement system itself, pensions, workers' compensation, unemployment compensation, group medical insurance, life insurance, employee taxes, and unused sick leave. The total for that is $18,864,715. Uh, capital projects and miscellaneous would be the capital projects themselves, the general liability, property and auto insurance, public employee liability insurance, reserve for personnel, transfer to the Fiscal Stability and Stabilization Fund, and transfer to Capital Stabilization Fund for $1,358,415. So the total general fund appropriation is $90,270,318. Then non-appropriated usage would be the reserve for abatements and exemptions. Uh, other amounts to be raised, cherry sheet offset receipts and state assessments on the cherry sheet. That total is $5,748,714 for a total budgeted general fund amount of 
$19,032. Do we have a motion to finance motion. Uh, the general fund? Second? Yeah, any discussion in finance? I know probably we've been talking about this for a while now, so I'm assuming we're, we're good with this. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance for the general fund budget, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the next component is 18109. Uh, this is orders uh, to be approved for the enterprise funds. Um, order that the sum of $6,325,939, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2019 sewer enterprise budget funds to be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet the appropriations $5,357,115 is to be raised from sewer receipts and $968,824 shall be allocated to indirect costs. And the uh, sewer enterprise fund is general sanitary sewer, sewer treatment, sewer debt, sewer interest, sewer indirect costs, and sewer reserves. So the total again is $6,325,939 for sewer enterprise. We have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Excellent. Any discussion on, on sewer enterprise? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the next uh, would be the water enterprise fund. Uh, the sum of $7,040,600, uh, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year's uh, fiscal year 2019 water enterprise budget to be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet the appropriation $6,466,625 to be raised from water receipts and $573,975 shall be allocated to indirect costs. Uh, this fund covers water treatment and operations, water debt, water interest, water indirect costs and water reserve accounts. Again, for a total of $7,040,600. Do we have a motion to finance? Motion. And a second? Yep. Any any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, the next one is the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. Upon the recommendation of the mayor order that the sum of $639,396, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2019 Solid Waste Enterprise Fund budget to be appropriated for the stated purposes and to meet that appropriation, $361,063 is to be raised from the solid weight waste receipts and $114,437 shall be allocated to indirect costs and $163,896 to be made available from the undesignated fund solid waste enterprise fund. This would cover um, solid waste and uh, indirect and direct costs for a total of $639,396. Do we have a motion to finance? Second. Second. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Uh, the next is the Stormwater Enterprise Fund. Again, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $1,951,986, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2019 Stormwater Flood Control Enterprise Fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes and to meet that appropriation, $1,703,366 is to be raised from the Stormwater Flood Control receipts and $248,620 shall be allocated to indirect costs. This is for stormwater drain operations, stormwater flood control operations, stormwater debt and interest, and the indirect cost for stormwater, again, for a total of $1,951,986. We have a motion in finance? And a second. Uh, any discussion on this one? Uh, hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. All right, so now we're going to move on to 18.110. This is the order to approve FY19 revolving funds. And my suggestion would be to take them as a group, so I'll read them off. And if anybody wants to break one out, just let us know. Um, again, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, the city shall vote limits on the total amount that may be expended for each of the revolving fund estab established by the chap by chapter 16 of city ordinances. Um, the energy and sustainability revolving fund for 150,000, the hazmat fund for 85,000, DPW public works construction services revolving fund for 85,000, senior services transportation fund for 100,000, senior service activities fund for 90,000, 
Senior Services gift shop revolving fund for 20,000. Senior Services food service revolving fund for 35,000. Senior Services publications fund for 35,000. Senior trips and traveling uh, 75,000. Athletic league fee revolving fund 200,000. JFK Family Aquatic Center 120,000. Northampton Public Schools Transportation Revolving Fund, $200,000. Smith Vocational Farm Revolving Fund, $100,000. Tourism Directional Sign Program Revolving Fund, $10,000. Public Health Nurse Program Revolving Fund, $30,000. James House Revolving Fund, $85,000. Sharps Disposal Program Revolving Fund, $15,000. Fire Alarm Monitoring Program Revolving Fund, $60,000. Uh, and DPW Reuse, or DPW Reuse Committee Revolving Fund, Fifteen thousand dollars. We have a motion in finance. Make a motion. Any? We have a second. I didn't know he was going to break him out. Any discussion on revolving funds? No. Nope, hearing none. All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, Which uh, yeah, the very first order was uh, 118108, the FY general fund budget, and we did. I've got two pages of it. We did both of the pages. Something. Is there another uh, section of that? that uh, introductory line. It's the, it's the very first. Mm. Which I think these two are just supplemental to. It's the very first order, yeah. right? In order to approve the fiscal 19 general fund budget. Yes, right up there on the screen. It's the one up on the screen. Yeah. Oh, let's see if I let's see where that is in my pile of stuff. Yeah, I don't have it in my pile. Of stuff. Yeah, you, you essentially uh -huh. went we did it. The line item of it. Do you want this one? Yeah, because I don't see where I don't see where I actually have that one in my uh, packet for. It's on the back of something? It's on the back. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it either, but. On the back of that, it's not on this one. Well, I've got one. This is coming out Somebody of the general. This is from the general council packet, I think. That was from my packet. Yeah, no, but that's from the council packet, not my finance packet. I only no, had the. that was from my finance packet. Was it? That was from my finance packet. I only have a finance packet. <laughs> all right, well. Just misplaced let's go back 90 to million. These are all well, the I numbers that we too. approved earlier. It's just our page. Um, and again, we're back to 118-108. This is in order to approve the FY19 general fund budget. Order that. Uh, the sum of $90,270,318, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2019 general fund budget, be appropriated for the purpose stated, provided that the appropriation for the Smith Vocational and Agricultural School shall be used solely for the purposes of meeting net school spending as defined by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and no funds so appropriated shall be transferred to any account or expended for any purpose, purpose that would not include be included in the calculation of net school spending. To meet this appropriation, $1,821,267 will be raised and appropriated from the parking uh, meter receipts reserves, 10000 from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund, 5000 from the Cemetery Sale of Lot Receipts, 968824 from Sewer Enterprise Funds, 573975 from Water Enterprise Funds, 114437 from Solid Waste Enterprise Funds, 248620 from Stormwater Receipts Funds, 5000 from Wetland Filing Fees, 1500 from Water Waste Fund, $13,609 from the Community Preservation Act Administrative Fund, $25,679 from the Reserve for Police Station Debt Service, $277,850 from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund, and $86,204,557 will be raised and appropriated. Do you have a motion? Move to the recommendation. Second. Second. All right. And it's kind of backtracking since we already approved the line items, but any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Positive recommendation of finance. Any opposed? Good. All right. So uh, let us get back. We did, we're going back. We did. Uh, 
adopted bond forfeiture. We, uh, let's see, we did the revolving funds, so we're up to bond forfeiture. Yeah. So bond for forfeiture, which is 18113. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, uh, whereas the lowest bidder on the ADA sidewalk project failed to sign a contract for the work, and whereas the city is entitled to keep the bid bond when the bidder fails to honor their bid, and the city plans to use the proceeds of the bond for the project, therefore order that $13,210.40 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance uh, to the ADA sidewalk project. We have a motion of finance? Make a motion. And a second. And as I understand it, the, the work that's going on outside, the original bidder uh, backed out, and we, we're keeping their bond, and we would transfer that money into the account for the project so we can use it to help pay the bill. Any questions for uh, Susan on this one at all? Is that a good description of what we're, what we're doing? All right, so we have a motion on this, yes? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 And moving right along up to uh, end of the year budget transfers. So we were doing FY19, now we're going to go back to um, FY18, and this is 14114 in order for FY18 end of the year budget transfers. And as the fiscal year has less than a month to go, what we're doing is just moving money from one account to another to balance the accounts out. Um, so ordered that the following FY 2018 budgetary transfers be made and hereby are made. Um, I'm going to read off where their um, the department and, and what it, what is being moved around. Human resources um, salaries permanent one thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars. Arts and arts and culture uh, salaries one hundred dollars. General liability insurance. Uh, vehicle to vehicle insurance, um, we're taking money from there for $1,425. Uh, veterans stipends, uh, transfer to $5,100. Uh, veterans travel, we're taking $5,100 from there. Uh, DPW administration from salaries permanent, we're transferring in $1,545. DPW cemetery salary permit, we're transferring in uh, $6,258. Uh, parks and recs salaries permanent, we're transferring in $6,500. Medical insurance, employee insurance benefits, we're taking $14,303 from there. Treasurer collector financial management services, we're transferring $17,200 into that account. Parking maintenance professional and technical, we're taking 15,000 from that account. Parking maintenance electricity, we're taking 2,200 from that account. A police training and seminars is gonna receive $11,928. Police permanent salaries, we're taking $11,928 from there. Information technologies, uh, computer equipment is gonna get $4,086. Information technology permanent salaries, we're taking $4,086 from that account. Uh, building contract service is going to get $3,000. Building vehicles is going to get $3,000. Uh, building permanent salary, $2,000. Uh, municipal debt service, uh, maturing principal on long-term debt is going to get $10,000. Uh, and building, I'm sorry, building permanent salary is going to lose $8,000. The um, interest on municipal debt is going to get $10,000. Uh, stormwater Enterprise Storm Drains Permanent Salaries is going to get $8,500. Stormwater Enterprise Funds Overtime is going to get $13,500. Stormwater Inter Enterprise Storm Drains Architecture and Engineering is going to lose $8,500. Stormwater uh, Enterprise uh, Catch Basin Cleaning is going to be reduced by $13,500. Stormwater Enterprise Flood Control Overtime is going to get $8,000 in stormwater enterprise flood control. Architecture and engineering is going to lose $8,000. So we're transferring $102,042 from some of those accounts and transferring 
42 into other accounts. So it balances out if you've been following along. So from one account to another account. Um, so for these transfers, can we have a positive recommend or a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the transfers and finance, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay. And I think when we get to the main meeting for these transfers, we're looking for two readings in the main meeting so that you know, this all has to be done before the end of this month. So uh, we'll probably see more at our next meeting once as we trail out the year. All right, the next is 18115, an order to appropriate free cash to capital stabilization and the stabilization account. Order that $500,000 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund under, undesignated, undesignated fund balance uh, to the following accounts. $250,000 capital stabilization and $250,000 into the uh, general stabilization fund. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Um, do you want to make any comments on this? On this Just one? that this is uh, typically at the end of the year as we um, settle up our various free cash related debts. I know you'll have an order coming up next for snow and ice, which is the other big one that we settle up. Um, it's been our policy to try to put funds into our stabilization and capital stabilization. So <coughs> pretty much track this order the last four or five years in June. Um, so that's what we're doing. So with the end of the year in sight? Yes. Um, putting trailings into? Uh, from free cash, yeah. yeah, because basically free cash will go away on June 30th. If it's not uh, somewhere. If it's not somewhere. Um, and so then we would not have any access to it until, you know, November, December, whenever free cash gets certified. certified. And so we, our policy has been to put it into these two stabilization the accounts. Of, yeah. And it's also important because we're, you know, obviously trying to um, build those up and we uh, rely on them partially for the capital program. As you just read that appropriation order, some of the funds are being appropriated for that account. Councilman Barger, do you have a question? I was just questioning on the appropriation for free cash on 18-113. Would that be the same thing, Mayor, as far as like two readings on that? Um, are you requesting two readings on, on I was requesting two readings on all of the financial orders except for the 2019 budget. Right. Because so the, because all the 18 makes, stuff. It makes it easier to keep running reports to look at balances right. to make sure that departments are not over, you know, that everything's balancing. Because otherwise I have to look at the report and remember, oh yeah, we're going to be moving to 50 or this or that. So, it, but if, you know, if you have reservations or you want to leave there's no reason that it has to be done except for the conditions of the auditor and myself. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, then, if we do two readings tonight on those, you can make those transfers, do them, and then see what other trailings after yes. those are done. So it makes it easier for you to account. It yes. makes it easier to close out this thing. All right. <coughs> all right. Um, any other questions on the stabilization transfers? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the next in 18116 in order to appropriate free cash uh, for the FY18 snow and ice deficit account. Order that $234,483 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance to the following accounts to cover deficits in the snow and ice account. Overtime for snow and ice, $96,815. Uh, snow removal supplies, $95,485, and vehicular supplies, $42,183. Do so we have a motion of finance? Make a motion. Second. Um, we do this every year. We do, and, and, and sort of like the legal fund budget, it's a chart that kind of goes up and down every year because it's dependent on the weather. Um, so this would basically, you know, we budgeted in the FY. 2018 budget, we budgeted 471,500 for snow and ice. Um, this would bring th this. The actual is 705,983, um, and so this this will true up that account by making this transfer from free cash. The five-year average for snow and ice has been uh, 721,000 uh, and 23 dollars. Uh, that's been our five-year average. So you know, 705,983 is right within that range. So. Um, Yep, that's it. Um, and Snow and Ice is one of those rare places where we can deficit spend and then make it up later. Cause yes. We know that. And the Municipal Modernization Act eliminated the need to come to the council yes. to take a vote to deficit spend. Yeah. Um, so that's why 
because like we just true it up I'd like to meet which council is going to stop plowing the snow <laughs> in the middle of winter I think it was sort of like a, a kind of a weird system yeah I like so I think we're safe now and we won't have any more snow I think we're safe that's why we're going to try to true up that budget all right so uh, any uh, we have a motion I think we're all set on that any other questions on this one uh, hearing none then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance please say aye aye, aye. any opposed all right. Uh, <coughs> next is 18117. It's an order to transfer $178,977 from employee health insurance uh, into the uh, OPEP trust. Order that the sum of um, $178,977, which represents the Medicaid Part D reimbursement from the GIC, be transferred to the employee health insurance account. Uh, to the other post employment benefits trust on OPEP. Uh, do we have a motion? A motion. Second. All right. And this is, uh, do you want to comment on this one at all? This yes. is just taking money we got back from GIC and putting it in the right uh, account. We got it back from Medicare reimbursement. Yeah. And as you know, the OPEP trust fund is something we've been trying to slowly build up. So uh, we thought that this this revenue coming back this would be a good opportunity to sock it away into that OPEP trust fund. If you read any of our S and P reports, um, one of the cautionary notes that they had every year is OPEP. They want to um, see it growing. They want to see that, that communities and corporations and states are actually putting together an OPEP trust fund. So we thought this would be a good place to put this. So mm -hmm. at the end of the year, because it's sort of a it's not something we could budget for because it arrived. At and it makes them happy and it helps our bond rating when, exactly. when they see it. Um, any questions from the mayor on that one? And uh, we have a motion, so. Uh, Make a motion. I think we got one already, but all in favor of a po positive recommendation on that one, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And then I think the last thing we have is 18118. Um, this is an order to appropriate $11,000 from the Bates Tomb Trust Fund for tomb uh, restoration and improvements. Order that pursuant to um, the FY 19 to 23 capital programs plan uh, that 18 or 11, I'm sorry, $11,000 be appropriated from the Bates Tomb Trust Fund. Um, such funds to be added to the funds appropriated in March of 2018 for rest, restoring restorative improvements to the Bates Tomb. We have a motion to finance. Make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, any uh, question on uh, Bates, Bates Tomb? Bates Tomb is part of the historic Bridge Street Cemetery, um, and it was part of the um, part of our uh, historic cemetery um, restoration plan that ha that was put together. And we put fifty thousand dollars into the capital budget for. Um, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Fifty thousand uh, was put in the budget uh, for the Bates Tomb uh, restoration project. We have a dedicated fund for Bates Tomb, so we took fifty thousand from there. Um, Director Lascalia uh, went out to bid, and the project has come in eleven thousand dollars higher than expected. So we're basically asking for an additional eleven thousand dollars from Bates Tomb. Um, we are asking for two readings because we want to get this construction project going. Because part of the project is to make it weather tight. Um, which is one of the problems that's happened there. Don't want so, leakage in the base. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Feel free to ask who's buried it. For the record, for the record, it's not it's not Norman. It's for the record. Uh, I, I believe <laughs> it's not. No. <laughs> Councillor. Yes. It was just our last meeting that we approved CPA funding for this as well, right? So this is supplement to the CPA funding. We approved CPA funding for um, uh, other gravestone restoration. Right. Um, I thought specifically it was cemetery, Bates though. Tomb. Uh, no, you you did approve a capital order for Bates. Right. Tomb. Yeah. Um, oh, is that what it was? Yeah, it was that a was capital order. Capital it was a separate March. project. March yeah. Yeah, we're, we're not using any CPA monies on Bates Tomb. It's like a rebate. We're using. Things keep coming. How about we we'll vote on this we'll one quickly? So, yes. so we have a motion, correct? Yeah. Diana. This one, and we have a second. So, all in favor of eleven thousand dollars for Bates Tomb, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, I don't know of any other new business. And to adjourn. 
Oh, just want to check. We haven't missed anything else, right? No. We were good. So no. No. A second to the motion to adjourn, and we're out of here. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are back in full city council, and we will go through some financial orders on first reading. The first is 18.108, in order to approve the fiscal year 2019 general fund budget. Is there approval? Is there a second. Any discussion? If not, I would ask for a roll call. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Mack. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Okay. The uh, order is, is approved in first reading. Next is 18.109, orders, plural, to approve fiscal year 20, 2019 enterprise funds. Um, this is approving um, the sewer enterprise fund, the water enterprise fund, solid waste enterprise fund, and the stormwater enterprise fund that you heard discussed in finance. All of them together. Is there a second? Move to second. Any discussion on all of those enterprise funds? If not, roll call. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Those orders are approved on first reading. Next is 18.110, in order to approve fiscal year 2019 revolving funds. Um, yep, just the one order. Is there a motion to approve this order? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the order? Roll call, please. Okay. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. And Councillor Carney? Yes. Order is approved. 18.113 in order to appropriate free cash um, bid bond forfeiture to ADA sidewalk project. There's a motion. Order approved. Made and seconded. Any discussion on the order? Roll call, please. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Suspend yes. Rule 14. Motion is made to suspend Second. rules. Second. Oh, yeah. Made and seconded. Any discussion on the suspension of rules for the purpose of allowing two readings? Not uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 No abstentions. Rules are suspended. Move uh, second reading. Is there a second? second. Any discussion on the order in second reading? Um, roll call whenever we're ready. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Klein. Yes. The order is approved on second reading. Uh, now 18.114 in order for fiscal year 2018 end of year budget transfers. A motion on this. So move. Approve. Motion is move to approve. Yeah. Any discussion on the motion to approve? Uh, roll call whenever we're ready. Okay. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, it's approved. Move to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Yes. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Rules suspended. Is there a motion? Uh, second reading? Second reading. Second. second. Any discussion on the order in second reading? For uh, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor. Uh, can I move um, F, uh, free cash stabilization, G, snow and ice, H, employee health transfers, and I, uh, Bates Tomb as a group? You just did. Uh, Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, so these are. As Council Murphy said, 18.116, in order to appropriate free cash to FY18 snow and ice deficits. 18.117, order to transfer 178977 from employee health insurance 
to OPEB Trust and 18.118 in order to appropriate $11,000 from Bates Tomb Trust Fund for tomb restorative improvements. Excuse me, I, did mm -hmm. we not vote on 115? Yeah, 115. We, that's the only yeah, I did, I, I did have through, uh, yeah, so I threw through. So, okay. so yeah. skipping over that one no, that's part of your motion. You want yeah. to? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Four, so four it's remaining. my omission. So we are also including 18.115 in order to appropriate free cash to the stabilization yeah. and stabilization funds. Okay. So made, and we have a second? Second. Made and seconded. Okay, Council Dwight seconded. Any discussion on those four orders? Ask for a roll call. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Move to suspend don't, rule. Don't, don't, don't we have um, to suspend, to suspend rules for second, uh, reading? second reading on those? I heard Councillor Klein make a motion to suspend oh, rules. Did, I didn't hear that. And I heard I'll second. Dwight second yeah. second it. It's a long second, yes. All those in favor of spending rules say aye. Any aye. aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Rules are suspended. Is there a motion to approve the full orders? On second reading. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion on second reading for four? Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And yes. Okay. Um, we have a number of financial orders on second reading, which will we were heard at the last council meeting and approved at that time. <clears throat> this is 18.100 in order to acquire one parcel of land containing 50 acres, more or less, located in Hanhock Trail in Williamsburg. Is there a motion on this? To approve this order. Move to approve. Second. Or second. Okay. Any discussion on the order? Hearing none. Council Bidwell. Uh, just that I'd like to thank the mayor and his staff for putting together this illustration that shows us where this piece fits in with the, the jigsaw puzzle out there. It, it's very helpful to see it. Okay. Duly noted. Thank you. Thanks to our finance director. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This is really early. You want to stick around? <laughs> no. There's so much more. Fun to be had. On the order, 18.100, any further discussion from the council? Uh, if not, roll call, please. Okay. Um, Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor LeBond? Yes. 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 The order is approved on the second reading. You heard that one. Now so there are counselors. Oh, we're almost at the end of a, our agenda, so let's stay focused. Uh, these are a number of <coughs> community preservation committee projects for funding on second reading. They are 18.101, order for a priority historic gravestone conservation, the Northampton Historical Commission for $100,000. Um, move, move. Well, there's others. So you want to read them all? Yep. Um, 18.102, an order for historic arms storage, historic Northampton, um, $2,976. 18.103, an order for um, conservation area, historical and ecological interpretive signage, Office of Planning and Sustainability, uh, $2,900. 18.104, an order for historic arms storage, historic Northampton, um, 18,104,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
Pleasant Futures project on Pleasant Street, the rebuild of Pleasant Street. Um, it's realigned parking in a, in a lot of places. Uh, for example, there's a part of Pleasant Street where we've moved parking from one side to the other. And so this is looking at parking as a group within that corridor and that um, to um, uh, the many of the changes have already been made so um, that uh, so this is to formally um, approve all of that um, well, I was to make a request um, presentation before legislative matter it's a rather comprehensive map that defines before and after <coughs> that would be helpful for purposes of discussion I will take note of that pictures and arrows yeah pictures and arrows photographs lines on the back stuff like that yeah we'll do a walking tour oh, that'd be <laughs> nice thank you pizza on the way again. discussion on the ordinance that codifies what already exists <laughs> referring it to the, the committee and legislative matters uh, all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed uh, to this report um, now we have the second reading 18.072 uh, an ordinance relative to parking on Hooker Avenue is a motion to approve us on second reading uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. second? Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay. Um, roll call, please. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Um, Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Ordinance is approved on second reading. Um, thank you. This is 18.073, an ordinance relative to parking on Vernon Street. Second reading. Second. Motion on this. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Discussion. I wonder if we could read the um, letter from Director the uh, DPW Scott. director. Mm -hmm. Do we have that? Was mm -hmm. uh, that an email? email. Oh, here. Yes. An email. It's an email. All right. Would you like me to read it? Please. Thank you. Um, let's see. Can I? Uh, get it? Yeah, it was addressed to me, so I just will read it. Jim, we received only one complaint uh, one time from a driver with a plow who couldn't get through. Vernon Street between Elm and Jewett Street is 24 to 25 feet wide. If parking space is eight feet wide and there are two cars parked across from each other. That would leave eight to nine feet for the travel way and less in, in the case of snow. A plow can be eight, eight or nine feet wide. So the math works and the complaint makes sense. Maggie reports that some of the other adjacent streets such as Washington <coughs> Ave, Kensington Ave have no parking on one side for a portion of the street and are also 25 to 20, 24 to 25 feet wide. There are conflicting issues here. In the case of two vehicles parked across from each other, a fire truck or uh, in this case a snow plow might not be able to get through. But this can be said of many city streets. On the flip side, a lot of parking would be lost if it is restricted to uh, on one side. We don't have a recommendation one way or the other here is this is a larger policy question. So I'd like to speak to this. Um, so um, that, yeah, I've, I've been out to the site two times already, you know, walked all around, you know, there's a fire hydrant, there's a really huge curb cut. Um, there were concerns expressed last time during first reading that we were going to lose a lot of parking. And um, that, um, you know, based on my walk around, I was like, I think we, we just needed to send it back and look it over. But also, based on um, the observations, it, this is an informal letter by the director to me, so that's why it's a, um, it doesn't have a, a usual professional touch to it. But um, that, um, that there's, uh, the director's talking about a metric in here, and that we that was another thing we were looking at last time, that that you know the width of a street um, can be used to determine 
um, how to make these decisions so that it, uh, we're not doing a street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood um, uh, way of handling this. So my recommendation is that um, we send this back to the TPC and that, um, that um, the TPC and DPW look at this and consider if there is some sort of, you know, a basic table for the street's 25 feet wide, here's what we can do. The street's 35, 30 feet wide, here's another thing we can do. And that these, um, uh, these questions can be resolved a little more equitably. Councilor Dwight. Uh, it was just a suggestion. I mean, in fact, we've had it enforced for over two decades now, a uh, snow emergency process by which um, we see a, a pending snowstorm, blue lights go on, robo calls are sent out, tickets that are, are issued and cars are towed. And that, of course, would address the issue relative to plowing. I would imagine, I would hope, it's, that was why it was put into effect. In fact, actually preceding that, in fact, there was a general winter parking ban throughout the whole city. You couldn't park on the streets. Uh, we, our inventory of cars has expanded exponentially since then. Uh, there are no single, family, single car family homes anymore. All that said, I mean, I think that that's got to be figured into your calculus and understand that there actually are, there are devices and mechanisms already in place to address some of these. Um, and and uh, Director Lascalia's point about the one complaint at that one time, I don't know what the circumstances were, but it seems to me that if it was, uh, if, if the parking ban were enforced, that those cars be removed and allowed for the plowing. So when you're considering the whole, and you, you'll have to, obviously, I think based on what she's describing, an overarching policy for the city that applies using certain metrics that you take into consideration, you do have that mechanism to don't overlook that because, to be honest, that's how we ended up with the Hooker Avenue issue. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I actually think you're absolutely right. I think it's a very good idea because it'd be very difficult to explain to one street why they qualify, the other street they don't. And whatever parking you eliminate pushes, those cars don't evaporate, they don't turn into hovercrafts, they actually end up parking somewhere else and you're going to hear the same pressures from other streets. So I like, I like the attitude of looking at this holistically and trying to address it holistically. Council for what too? Um, I, I like the approach too, e even though I, I, I do think there's a, a good case that can be made for Vernon Street and I think that ultimately it could very well meet the test, whatever test is devised. Uh, but, but I would uh, agree, I'm very sympathetic to the argument that well, if we're doing it here, then why aren't we doing it on the street and that street? But, so I do think that some, some metric that takes into account a 25 foot width and that takes into account is there availability in nearby streets to absorb the parking that would be displaced, as I think there is in this case. And does there appear to be sentiment from, from, from the neighborhood in, 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 in support, however that gets worked out? I do think some, some methodology like that of a more global nature would be helpful. But I, I'd also point out that it's not just uh, snow plows. It's, it's, it's emergency equipment, too, coming, coming through there. So <coughs> it's an issue with that kind of width with parking on both sides. So I'm supportive of this notion of taking it back to TPC and to DPW and thinking it through holistically. Vice President Chair. Um, as I told you over email, Councillor Nash, um, I, I also agree that I would uh, welcome a metric or sort of a, a policy that applies to the entire city. Um, but I have a question for you, which is you said that you've made a couple of site visits there. Were you, or, and, or maybe um, Director Lascalia had answered this for you, did we determine how many spots we're talking about? I feel like we're, we've been putting out a very vague lots of spots. But do we know how many well, parking the spots? original diagram made it look like there could have been like 20 spaces there. Yeah. When in fact there's actually, a, there, there's a very wide curb cut. It's probably right. 40 feet wide. There's a fire hydrant. Um, we, you have to account for the setback from Elm Street. So there's about 20 feet you go back that you can't park from, uh, in, uh, at, from an intersection. Then there's the fire hydrant at some point. And so the actual amount of parking on that side of the street is probably about half of what it looked like in that diagram. So, so how many would you estimate? 
No, I'm putting you on the spot. I have, I have, I have an eight. estimate. Six to eight. <clears throat> That's that? what I was going to say. I, 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 I walked it, too, with, with that in mind. And I, my estimate is seven to eight spaces. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? So do I hear a motion to refer this to the Transportation Parking Commission for yeah. Make a motion. Second. Yep. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Matters referred. Um, finally, 18 point. 098 ordinance to delete sewer use from chapter 260 of the Northampton Code. Is a motion to approve this ordinance? So moved. So second. Second. Um, I ask that this be continued until today, just for clarification. Um, and I had an opportunity to speak with the mayor, actually, with uh, Councillor Dwight and the city solicitor about the reasons for doing this. My question was it seemed like we were transferring. Um, a legislative, uh, well, we are. We're basically eliminating a section of the code and giving and putting it under um, um, the purview of the executive um, through regulation. Um, and you know, I saw the regulations that the mayor and the DPW has set up, and they're already. In effect, this is just kind of a cleanup thing, kind of another holdover from separation of powers and, and the new charter. So. I was satisfied with that information. It seems like it makes sense uh, to do this. So, was I the only one who was confused? Probably. No, I, I was confused. You were confused too? Okay, good. Well, any other discussion? Okay. Uh, then I'd ask for a roll call on this ordinance whenever. Okay. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shera? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Thank you very much. Any information requests? Any committee study requests? Any new business? Uh, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Adjourned. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much. So. <clears throat>